Hi there, welcome back to IndyCar on the 29th of August. As the end of this month looms, so too does a lot of other things. Um, now, you might have been thinking for the last few weeks, when on earth is Holyrood going to be ending its summer recess and when are we going to see some politicians uh, back doing their jobs again? This week has seen unprecedented levels of panic among the British population. It's got to the stage, actually, where even the Conservative voters themselves, who were polled in the last few days, 50% of them are now saying they're in favour of nationalising the energy utilities, which their own party privatised back in the 1980s under Margaret Thatcher. Things have changed so much in the United Kingdom that the disasters that are currently um, unfolding before our very eyes have already eclipsed Brexit, which seemed to be the cluster burak of all of them, and have now or has now paled into insignificance next to the massive impoverishment which the Tories have enabled through allowing energy companies to charge 300% increases in energy costs. Now, this is despite the fact that the United Kingdom is largely unaffected by the, um, the cutting off of Russian gas supplies because Britain, as it were, if you want to take the United Kingdom as a whole, is completely self-sufficient in gas and could quite easily um, buy all the gas it needs directly from its own producers at cost, probably, if they put their minds to it. But of course, they won't put their minds to it. And all the while this is going on, not a single British minister in the cabinet has been available to any of the media to comment in any way, shape or form about what is currently happening in the United Kingdom. 300% increase in the price of gas and electricity in the UK is a joke, considering the fact that most of Europe, which is actually suffering from the gas crisis caused by Russia, are not putting their prices up by anything like as much as the United Kingdom has done. You can only conclude that the British government must be colluding with the big six energy companies to line the pockets of wealthy um, investors and CEOs in the energy companies because the only people that will benefit from this catastrophe which has been deliberately engineered by the Tories are the Tories themselves and their friends in the energy companies. Nobody has been available to talk at all. In the meantime, the Tories continue to dither while the rest of the country is preparing to freeze through the winter with up to 25% of all of the United Kingdom citizens planning to leave their central heating switched off throughout the winter. Now, this is unprecedented. I hate to use the word unprecedented, but it shouldn't be precedented because Britain is sitting on top of a massive pile of natural resources and yet they are selling them to the highest bidder in the global market and then buying them back at massively inflated prices and trying to sell it back to us. All of which has even convinced half of the Tory party that um, <laughs> the privatisation of the utilities was a bad idea. There's also been news leaking out today, if you'll pardon the expression, that's an unintended pun, leaking out today that a spokesperson for um, one of the English water companies was saying that English people will have to get used to to actually drinking treated sewage in order to save water so that there is not a water shortage. They're actually talking about people in England getting used to drinking treated sewage water in order to stave off a shortage. Now that goes alongside the, um, the other piece of news today, which is one of London's only two freshwater streams, which are very rare, these are limestone streams which flow through the city centre, is now polluted with raw sewage as well, ruining completely a usually pristine natural resource which ought to be protected. Also people at the seaside have been warned by the RNLI and others not to swim in the sea at England's beach resorts because of the risk of contracting stomach diseases from raw sewage floating around in the sea. Add to that the embarrassment of the uh, the British Royal Navy today when the biggest ship that they have ever built, the flagship of the British Naval Fleet, and this is the aircraft carrier, the Duke of Edinburgh, barely made it out of port before it broke down yesterday. So we are seeing not a country which is um, the, you know, the third or the fifth largest economy in the world or a leading player on the global stage. What we're seeing emerging here is a tin pot, third world, foreign, you know, basically a, a 
a dictatorship where the people have been impoverished, the people at the top, the corrupt officials in government are being enriched and all their buddies in the big businesses are being enriched as well, while the rest of the country goes to pot. And even the Tories' own supporters are beginning to recognise that nationalisation of utilities is the only way to get control over energy prices. In the meantime, here in Scotland, we are waiting for Holyrood to come back from recess, and that will happen next week on the 4th of uh, September, as far as I understand. And it can't come a moment too soon, because there has been nobody steering the ship in the Scottish Parliament, really, and there's not been anybody at all on the bridge of the British Titanic, uh, the actual ship which has hit the Brexit iceberg and is now floating in a sea of sewage uh, with people freezing to death through the winter so that they can eat. This is the worst post-war crisis in British history. And who are the Tories planning to put in charge of the country at a period when we need crisis management but Liz Truss, the ultimate lightweight. Liz Truss hasn't got the faintest idea how to manage a crisis on this scale. But that is who the Tories look like they're going to appoint as the next Prime Minister. Boris Johnson has been making statements saying that there will be masses of money available from whoever it is that that the Tories have appointed the new leader. Of course, none of us in Scotland or any place else in the UK gets to vote on who this Prime Minister is. This is all down to the Blue Rinse Party in the southeast of England to decide who the next PM should be. And who they've appointed, I mean, frankly, is the class idiot. The only reason that Liz Truss is in the running at all is because she's probably the only person who was standing in the row when they said volunteers to be the next PM take one step forward and everyone else took a step back. She is the patsy. She is the one who drew the short straw. And she's the one who is going to be put in charge of a country which is falling to pieces, floating in sewage, starving and freezing through the winter, whilst the energy companies get richer and richer. In the meantime, the Scottish Parliament resumes its place in Holyrood on the 4th of September. And I would hope to God that when Nicola Sturgeon comes out of her holiday recess and makes her first speech in Holyrood, one of the first things that she should say is that as soon as Scotland votes to become independent, the first thing that the Scottish Government will do is nationalise all of its energy utilities straight away so that none of this misery is visited on the people of Scotland for a moment longer than is necessary. But it looks as though we're all going to have to suffer through a winter, not of discontent, but of freezing temperatures, lack of food, and if you happen to be unlucky enough to live in England, drinking treated sewage and swimming in beaches which are polluted with raw sewage, whilst watching your flagship aircraft carrier drift past on the tide. All of which is not a good look, very embarrassing for the UK at a time when it is trying to help Ukraine by passing weapons to the Ukrainians who I understand today have finally launched that offensive that they've been planning for so long. At the moment, I can see very little good news on the horizon, so the only thing I can uh, assume at the moment from the fact that nothing is happening in Scottish politics is that something big must be getting planned, because otherwise I can't see a way out of the current crisis for the people of Scotland. However, when you compare the mess that the United Kingdom is basically becoming as we watch in front of our very eyes, you can see that independence, far from looking like a risk, is beginning to look like the last lifeboat on the Titanic when it comes to getting off the sinking ship. And it's a, a situation where I think the Scottish Government needs to bring forward its plans and tell us all that the um, independence campaign starts now because right at this very moment people are looking for hope. There is a need for some light at the end of this tunnel. And right at the moment there just isn't any. However, I think, uh, like I say, when it comes to about the 4th of September and we see Holyrood come out of recess and reopen and, and the Scottish Parliament starts to do business again, it, things will have to change pretty rapidly. We do at least, uh, with Nicola Sturgeon, have somebody who can deal with crisis and who is cool under pressure and does know how to run the country. The question is, does she have the courage of her convictions to push forward for the, refer the referendum as soon as possible? and to prevent the Scots from having to suffer any longer than they actually have to. Right at the moment, I cannot see how the United Kingdom can get out of the mess it's got into. At the moment, it feels like um, Nero 
fiddling while Rome burns. It's basically Liz Truss dithering while the rest of the country freezes and starves. And of course, the Tories are so lofty and so far above everyone else and so cushioned and so cosseted, not to mention having all their fuel bills paid at our expense, they don't care. They don't care whether we freeze or starve or not, as long as we keep paying massive amounts of money into these energy companies so that they can get their dividends from the shares they probably own. And there are quite a few Tory uh, politicians who have shares in big energy companies. I'm pretty sure you could look that up and find out just how many of them are actually in the pockets of the energy companies who are compromised by having shares in these massive corporations. Anyway, I'm afraid that's about it for me today. Um, I will be back again tomorrow. I hope there is some better news coming. It seems to be a day of disasters and delays in all sorts of ways. I noticed that uh, NASA has had to scrub the launch of its moonshot today due to a technical problem with the engines. Not really a surprise um, with something that complicated, but the fact that they hadn't tested chilling these engines down beforehand really points to a problem within NASA that they never tested this before going to the launch pad. However, that's beside the point. Scotland is in the ideal position to get out of the sinking ship. We have all the energy resources we need. We just need to take control of them and we need our own government in Holyrood to say that and to say that if we vote for independence, all of these utilities will be nationalised. There's no question about it. You will never have to pay bills like this ever again because to me, that is the biggest selling point of all for independence right at this moment. And if they don't make that point, then I don't of what the point actually is anymore. I'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, don't worry about your heating just now. Obviously, it's still quite warm and we have to hope that the, the remaining part of the autumn stays relatively warm until we can get out of this toxic union. The last thing we want is for a quarter of our population to be freezing and half starved and for children to go hungry and for old pensioners who are stuck in their houses to be unable to keep the heating on. We need action, we don't need talk, and we need a government that's prepared to basically put its own future on the line and say we are going to take control of this, unlike the Tories who are so hands off that they basically aren't steering the UK ship anymore at all. Anyway, that's it for me today. I'll see you again tomorrow. In the meantime, keep the faith. Let's see what happens on the 4th of September. But I would expect the SNP Green government to come out swinging next week. Because if they don't, there's going to be a big uproar from the supporters of independence. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.